But boy, I'm really excited to show you this. Watch this. In 2016, scientists connected with ICR. What's that stand for? Institute for Creation Research. Finally, this is my view of it now, my opinion. So rate it how you will. DNA <coughs> research has been ahead uh, of DNA software. And, and the research and the software are the ability to display in a medium that the public would understand has been lagging behind, but in 2016 it looked like it caught up. Now again, it's just the way I'm viewing it. This is a magazine, Acts and Facts. Did Jesus teach recent creation and so on? But DNA trends confirm Noah's family. DNA trends confirm Noah's family. And you're seeing a little diagram there on the left. Let's get, get it bigger. These, these are, are, it's a series of lines, obviously. And let me, I'll show you with the red ones. Maybe you see it better. And each line represents a different person. There's 369 lines because there's 369 people in this sample. And they, they all have DNA, which is a code of who we are, sort of. Think of it that way. And it was commanded to this program to group them by similarity. And so here's what happened. Three different nodes, they kept docking at one of three different nodes. And uh, so that's what the three blue arrows highlighted by three red arrows is saying so far. DNA software has finally caught up with DNA research. Quote, human mitochondrial DNA. Now, mitochondrial DNA, a little word on that. It's a little piece of every cell. And the uh, only women have their, well, 99.5% of your DNA is in your nucleus, but one half of 1% is in your mitochondria. And that is always a female line. For whatever reason, God's design, it's always female in the mitochondrial DNA. So that's handy because it narrows, you can, you can kind of like discard a big part of the data and get to it to the bottom line quicker. That's the way I look at it. And so this shows three central nodes. This is a quote. These fit the number of expected mitochondrial DNA sequences differences between the three wives of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And these women, by the way, incidentally, were only eight base pairs different. So they're probably sisters or first cousins. That's just more speculation. And quote again, Dr. Jensen's data, he was the lead scientist, data shows that the human mitochondrial DNA tree has three nodes. Thus, everyone alive today, is that y'all? <laughs> everyone alive today carries one, listen to these words, one of three unique ancestral maternal sequences. This is significant words. Coming through the female line, they have a unique genetic blueprint. Even twins are not exactly alike. They're very similar, obviously, but not exactly. This fits Genesis' claim that all humans who exist today descended from one of the wives of Noah's sons. A study of 7,098 people from the oldest United Nations data set available revealed similar results in 2013. They just weren't able to display it yet. So in short, if all peoples descended from three genetically unique mothers, then, number one, our mitochondrial DNA sequences should trace back to their, one of their three nodes. Number two, those nodes should have about eight differences between them at that point in time. Number three, plus a strict biblical timeline suggests these mitochondrial DNA trends trace all of humanity back to Noah's sons, three wives, a striking intersection of biblical history and modern genetics. Wow! Wow! And like Jim said, the times we were living in, it just looks like there's a convergence. Now I'm not predicting anything or not a prophet or any of that. But I, I think I'm observant. And I know he's observant. And uh, <clears throat> so I want to show you a few more things. Now I know time is my enemy, but I want to... Can I mention one thing about that? Yeah. Because one, one thing you're getting out of this is that uh, we oftentimes wonder, did Noah's wife have any more... Did Noah's wife have any more children, right? right. Um, so uh, from what we find out here, we have an answer to that question. She did not have any more, at least not that, that survives to this time. They all come through Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 
That's right. And as a mathematician that studied this, I was using in my formula uh, the concept of eight human beings going forward from the flood, which that is true. And I was wondering if it was four fertile couples or only three. Because Noah was 600 years, two months, and 17 days old the first day of the flood. And he was probably a little older than his wife. I mean, that's kind of typical. But 600 years old? Still having children? I know they were healthy. I know they were had pristine genetic pool, gene pool. And the answer is, uh, when we use three fertile couples, the results are more accurate. And so we don't think that she was still having babies after 600. You know, thank you, Lord, right? 